in the distant past of July 19th, 2014, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at an awesome little game store known as Red Cap Games and Hobbies, there was a Netrunner Regional Championship Tournament. This is one of your elimination rounds. Game number 19. On the left, the third seed, Damon, playing NBN, the win is yours. Will the win be his? On the right, Brandon, the 14th seed, playing Kate. What's going to go down here? Well, before we find out, I just want to remind everyone, uh, just briefly, this is not the only thing that I do. This is like actually like a side deal for me. I've been doing this podcast called Geek Nights for a long time, and I also am a guest speaker at many conventions, such as the upcoming PAX Prime in Seattle. So you should check those things out. The game begins. All right, everyone. People make a lot of talk about how when you play a long tournament, fatigue can set in, mess with your mind. Here is the greatest example of that I have ever seen. Two players clearly at the end of their rope. The endurance, the stamina will truly be tested in this match. You can already see a mistake was made. He ran the pop-up and accessed and did not pay the credit for it. Let's see what other kinds of mistakes will occur. Nice rainbow blocking R&D. But the account siphon through the pop-up window is wide open. But he doesn't have an account siphon because he's Kate. <laughs> so, and he spent his influence on that Desperado there. Unlikely to have an account siphon. But the data sucker is probably going to get the job done. Probably. Keep in mind, these players making you know, a mistake, like not paying for pop-up window. These are not bad players. These players made it to the elimination round and won games there <laughs> to get this far. Um, so... That just shows you how hard it is to keep playing Netrunner all day from early in the morning, 10 or 11, all the way up to midnight or 1 a.m. It is not easy. So um, the runner hit archives a bunch to load up on credits and data suckers. The corp spent a turn to clear, which bought him time. Uh, because he, I guess he knows the runner has this pattern of, oh, you cleared my virus counters? You know, it, it was probably enough to take out the rainbow. That bought him enough time, because the runner then spent another turn running archives a bunch to uh, biotic out that Astro script with a shipment from Sansan. San. But now everything is wide open, and there's an R&D interface. Breaking news, R&D <laughs> interface kills you if you don't have ice on R&D. Yeah, there's an interesting pattern in this game uh, where the corp clears virus counters quite a few times uh, and the runner responds by running archives to refill. And basically, the corp is getting a card draw and the runner is gaining four credits and resetting his data sucker to four counters. And then the game begins again. You know, perhaps if it was earlier in the day, uh, you would remember to ice up the archives and then clear the virus counters. But it doesn't look like he's drawing ice, right? So that, that's not an option he has. He has five credits. I mean, biotic shipment is, is active uh, if he can draw the agenda. And he has a Jackson Howard. So I'm surprised, even with the Desperado and such, uh, the runner didn't immediately run and, and trash that Howard, even, you know, especially when there's a Howard in the trash there. You could really shut down the Corp's drawing ability, uh, prevent them from, you know, getting another Astro script and perhaps closing up the game with it. You know, if you have two Astro scripts, uh, a Beal, and, and uh, any sort of fast advance card, that's three points for game over. Okay, keeps hitting R&D with the interface. There's no res, and the NAPD comes out. There's a biotic. 
If he has an agenda, it's going to get scored. Most likely. Well, if he had a 3 for 2, if he had an Astro, he could score it with his other Astro, and he, he wouldn't hesitate to do that. So, I guess, is it safe to assume he doesn't have one? The runner here drops a clone ship, we can see, and there's a parasite in the trash. So, I don't, you know, and he's so many data suckers. I don't know what ice you can put down. You just had to sort of put down any old end the run, like quandary, and then another quandary, just to get him to use up the parasite. I think I also saw another clone ship in the hand he's hiding. Okay, clearing virus counters again, but leaving archives open. And the runner, yes, the runner responds by running archives a whole bunch. He threw out a pop-up window to clear those virus counters. See, that's definitely, I would have put that pop-up window on the archives, let a turn go by, even though he's got the interface, he's going to hit R&D, whatever, and then cleared. Force him to use a parasite and a pop-up window or run through the pop-up window and give you a bunch of money. Or, you know, just force something to happen. All right. There's a fast track. That's good. That is good. Get AstroScript and score it with fast track. Yeah. May, I mean, if you have fast track, you know, the R&D lock might not matter. If you can get to seven before the runner can get to seven, it doesn't, you know... You just have to slow them down enough. Especially, you know, if you clear virus counters, you're getting your draw from your mandatory. Uh, you know, you're getting that one card closer to your victory, and the runner is just spending their whole turn running archives. Now, why you might say, well, why doesn't the runner just run R&D after getting cleared? Well, what if the ice on R&D, right? The ice on R&D hasn't rezzed. Uh, what if it's, say, a Grim or something? E or any, pretty much anything that can trash the, the data sucker, which would be anything but a Roto Turret, because a Roto Turret could be clone ship parasited straight away with zero strength. But yeah, Grim, Grim I think, is the fear. So the runner is not going to run the unrezzed ice without a bunch of data suckers. Even so, he only has four, which isn't enough to take out a Grim. If there is one. So if that is a Grim, the core probably should res it. Kill the data sucker. Without the data sucker, uh, any end the run ice of, you know, s any m amount of strength is going to be able to keep the runner out for at least a little while. You've got two Astros already. And you have the Jacksons still. You could probably tear right through and, you know, get, get to six at least. It looks like breaking newses are gone, though. Usually, I think the agenda loadout in this deck is two breaking news, is, is typical. It's usually three NAPD, three Beal, three Astro, that's 6, 12, 18, and two breaking news. So he's going to need two, either an Astro and a Beal, or two Beals uh, to round this one out, or a three point Beal. Okay, he's, there's a run in R&D. He popped the Jackson just to dilute R&D. Can't keep him out. He's not going to res the ice. It's going to get parasited anyway. You're just spending money on that. So at least dilute R&D. Make it harder for him to get the agenda. And what is it? Oh, man. He got the third Astro. Oh, that's it's not looking good. Not looking good. Keep digging because you pulled a card out. Not game over. The score is six to four in the runner's favor. I know the world is yours build at this time was very low ice. Um, but even so, you need you know, you gotta it's like, yeah, the runner can can pretty much take out any ice you've got. But at least ice slows him down a bit. As long as you keep enough to fast advance, if the cards uh, show up in your favor, you, know, you never know when the top card will be fast track. Oh, we cleared virus counters again, but archives is still open.
And the runner again responds just by running archives a whole bunch uh, four times after viruses got cleared. Okay, so now the corp puts a whole bunch of ice in R&D, presumably resible ice, uh, enough to stop the parasite onslaught, but leaves archives open. So why not run archive? Well, he's oh, he ran archives once to get another data sucker, then a clone ship, then run R and D. There's a pop up window. That's not going to do it. Quandary, clone ship parasite. That's gone. Do you res the third ice that you've not res the whole game at this point? I mean, the clone ship's there with a data sucker of five, but at least you make him use it. If only that pop up window out front was actually an end the run. It looks like the runner only had, you know, he has the two parasites. So you had to make him use both of them and then have a third end the run. Whew. That's got to feel really vulnerable as a corp to only have two pop-up windows protecting you. Especially when there's an R&D interface and the runner is at six points. Okay, there we go. An end the run, presumably... In front of the pop-up window in R&D. You know, and if, if that successfully ends the run for like two or even three turns, that could be enough, right, to find a Beal and another Beal and score both of them. Oh, he spent the money to res. It looks like a guard. So the runner ran it. Click one. End of the run. Click two, data sucker. Click three, scavenge the data sucker for yet another parasite. And final click, run R&D again. Ah, oh, scavenge, even more parasiting. And a beal on the top of the deck. The end. Wow. That was, that was just brutal. Oof. I think this is why you see the... Um, you know, the six-card hand didn't even come into play. There were hardly any HQ runs. I think this is why you're seeing Near Earth Hub do the same shtick even more powerfully because he gets so much card draw automatically. You don't even need to use Jackson Howard. You get this epic economy going on that you could see the the world is yours is having trouble uh, getting economy with just you know sweeps weaking I think on one turn for like four credits um, and still having you know all the influence for three botic labors. <laughs> 